like you, we don't have to like do everything because like this is the only life we have. Uh, we live for God to have the best life. It's predicted in the Bible, but but just it sh- more shows that sticking with the Bible will keep you out of chaos because you know because just the straight and narrow way. It's I don't need anything else. Uh, everything now is perfect. Fine. Maybe a golf course, right? You, well, you love I would like it. <laughs> a golf course? I'm keeping my eyes on Jesus. Keeping my eyes on Jesus. Keeping my eyes on the one who loved me first. Anything that you want to say, say it. Anything you want to say, just jump in. If you guys have questions, we'll just see how this goes. How's that? Why don't you talk about, like, when they say it's so rare to see you know, children who love being with their family, love uh, life, are not depressed, are not, you know. Um, What would you say contributes to your peace and joy? Um, Probably just being stable, like having a stable house, um, having a stable family. And not going along with the ways of the world and how society's changing because all these kids, you know, they're they're just messed up, all messed up. But that's the way that society raises them nowadays. And I just, you know, I think it's more going back to how it used to be. Not going like not going with the trend or the flow, going back to like grounding your kids in the word and grounding your kids in faith. Um, I think that's a big key to it, is our family isn't going with the flow of the world. It's, you know, we just stay. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Do you guys remember the, almost like when you would see other people doing other things or other people were being raised a certain way? Do you remember when you kind of wished that you could be more, quote unquote, normal? And, And what you know, now that you're thankful that you're not, can you just talk about that a little bit, both of y'all? Because we've talked about that at length, like wishing that uh, that we could do certain, that you guys could do certain things that other maybe other friends or family was doing, but now that you see what that looks like on the other side. Well, um, I just think, you know, like whether it's having money or watching this or that or having this or that, it's just you see them now and they might be happy, but they don't have the, I know they don't have the peace we have. If they do, I'm, I'm happy about it, but you know, yes. but yeah, I we want them to, right? just being thankful for what you have and just seeing how, how different our family is and how we function and operate. I feel like it's just, it's just a blessing. You know, I don't, I don't wish, like, I don't like hate how they are, like how friends are just people I see are, but like, I'm just so thankful for how we're raised. I've seen you embrace and I've heard you embrace. I've heard recently that it's important to you not to just embrace whatever's happening around you, current trends, things like that. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, I probably do a little too much, but I love going against everything that is normal, like like, uh, like dressing or, well, not really dressing, like certain ways. Yeah. I like I like fashion, but like, I don't like the trends that like kids my age, teen- teenagers my age. I don't li- I don't do that. I like I like sticking with what works and what what worked. You know, just just what uh just back in the day. You know, like, like just being normal. Like you, it's just kind of weird now. Like everything's weird. <laughs> everything's it's weird. truly weird. <laughs> That's true. Just be just be normal. I love I love being normal. I love being normal. <laughs> not extra. Now that it's not normal. Extra, though. Being weird is normal now. Sadly. Yeah. If anybody's watching this, I'm not calling you weird. But. <laughs> yeah, and I think, you know, I, I love what you're saying. You want everybody to have peace. But you know people, you've seen people, you've been around enough people for, you're 16 now, right? So you've had a chance to see people's lives when you were younger, kind of want what they had, and now so thankful that that was not 
allow that we didn't just give you free reign to do whatever you wanted to do when you were little, right? Yeah. Shiloh, what are your thoughts on some of that? On just contentment, peace, you know, because I, I think that, I think now people expect teenagers to be rebellious, depressed, moody. Um, they expect it. I mean, even when we meet people now, they'll be like, oh, I mean, I've had people like say right in front of them things they're going to be doing, you know, uh, illegal things, sinful things. And it's not even a thought in their head. It's not like we're restraining them and, try, you know, because our what we value have become y'all's values now, right? I remember hearing, um, I don't remember who the preacher was, but he was someone from way back. And he was saying that if you can get a child basically in the presence of God, introduce them to the presence of God, the richness of his presence, they will not rebel. They will not have that time of going into all these things like drugs, all these addictions, because that search is trying to fill something. And when they learn that the presence of God is so rich and filling and satisfying, they don't leave that to go try to find. They've already found the only one that can satisfy. I mean, we had a girl here last night who hasn't been here in years. And she came in trembling and filled with anxiety. And she said, the last time I can remember, they said she got out of her car and ran down here last night. She said, the last time I can remember feeling peace and happiness at all was the last time I was here. And she said, I was here just living a simple life. I had finally gotten delivered of so, so much. And she said, then I thought I just kind of had it. I had, you know, I could feel his presence. So I just thought I was fine. And she said, I remember leaving and taking that first drink and something coming over me. And she said, I've spiraled since. And I don't, I, she said, I thought I would come in here and just throw myself at the altar. I'm desperate. She said, nothing that I've tried has helped at all. There's no peace. And so I'm just thinking that they'll never have to experience that because they have who satisfies. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So what are, do you have any thoughts on that? Or would you rather have like a more specific question? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, every, I mean, I don't really, I don't need anything else. Uh, everything now is perfect. Fine. <laughs> Maybe a golf course, right? You, well, you love I would course. like it. <laughs> a golf course? <laughs> Maybe a golf course, I like just said. Free golf. <laughs> Just a, just a little expenditure there. Just a little, that's it. I think, you know, one thing that I've loved with our boys, and, and sometimes when we talk, I want, sometimes I don't ever want it to come across as like bragging that our children are different than everybody else and they're amazing and everybody else's children are terrible. That's not at all the point of this. And so if you're, if you're Price watching time. and you're like, well, look at there they are, know yeah. it alls. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, perfect children. Um, one thing that I love is that our children are exposed to everything we're exposed to. Yeah. I, I love that that they've been exposed to the chaos that took place in 2020, <laughs> and they're exposed to demons getting cast out. They're chaos exposed the to they, they they know they know about transgenderism and and homosexuality and. They know what's going on in the political realm, not not so much that they're inundated with it, but they know they know so much that they haven't been 
they haven't been, they're not going to be stunned. You know how the, there's, there's kind of that idea that homeschool kids one day will be socialized. I'm thinking my children know more about just about everything than all these other kids combined. And not because we're amazing, but because we are literally not shielding them from the world because they are already shielded and protected by the Holy Spirit. And I love that my children have said multiple times that that alcohol is so stupid. They're never going to touch it. Like this, was, it was not provoked. It was not prompted. It was not like, hey, do you guys, I hope you guys don't try alcohol one day. It wasn't like even set up that way. It was, this is so stupid because they've lived enough life to see enough people that alcohol has ruined their life. They've seen it. And so because they've seen that, but they've also experienced the goodness of God. Shine and I, I have no doubt that my children are going to probably stay on the straight and on the narrow because they understand that the straight and narrow biblically is what matters. Can you talk a little bit about just like, without going into detail, we could edit anything out that needs to be edited out so you don't have to like ever feel like this is just, we're not live. You guys have been exposed to so much in life. Like talk about how that has shaped a little bit of your experience as it relates to what the Bible says and then how you've seen that play out a little bit in real life just more like grounds us you know it, you don't um it just yeah it just shows it shows us that you know like all the chaos and all the, it's like it's predicted in the bible but but just it sh- more shows that sticking with the bible will keep you out of chaos because you know because just the straight and narrow way it's it's you it's clear it's easy I mean, it, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard, but but it's straight. It's not like you're just going, f- getting blown by the wind, just going from one thing to the other. It's a it's a it's a plan. It's a path, and it's a like that's what you live for, is to stay on the straight and narrow and walk in fellowship with Christ. So it just keep, yeah. I, I love you don't it. need to live for this life. Mm-hmm. Amen. Tell me about that. Yeah. I did. Um. (laughs) That's what happens at home all the time. He'll tell me something. I'll go, tell me. And he'll go, I did. (laughs) What does that mean to you? Because somebody might be listening, and maybe they've never really heard that. Because you've heard the phrases Mm -hmm. from the Bible over and over and over. But some people go to church for years and have never heard, don't live for this life. So what does that mean to you? Like, uh... Because, like he was talking about, um, like, living for uh, the, living for heaven and um, and not for this life. Um, like, you, we don't have to, like, do everything because, like, this is the only life we have. Uh, we live for God to have the best life in heaven. So like the only you only live once, you know that when people mean when they say that, yeah, they mean like if you're gonna be stupid, like now's the time to do. It. You only got one life to live. If you're gonna do something wild or crazy, you only got one life to live. Go all out. And and I love what you're saying. This is not this is not our real life. Mm-hmm. I love that. Thinking about when you said something about, I can't remember who said it, but seeing alcohol ruin people's lives it's like y'all have seen so much of the bible come to life like the bible says that yeah. don't be drunk with wine for it will ruin your life but be filled with the holy spirit praise the lord um on mother's day you were saying um your encouragement to moms were to be more available a lot of what gets said about pastor's children is that they resent the church. They resent sometimes God, resent whatever, because they didn't have their parents. And then I've watched it go to the other side where people are like, that's not going to happen to our children. So they chill children from church. They try to give them their own life while they're doing ministry. And um, that's not, we haven't taken either route with y'all. Can y'all talk about how it is, because the only, you know, 
the only childhood you have is the childhood <laughs> you've had. So what has y'all's experience been with us being in full-time ministry? Pretty easy. I mean, I we I used to think a lot that we had church way too often, but it's it's you know I, I don't think that really anymore. But um, but it's just yeah, it's really easy because y'all are home all the time, and if y'all have to leave, you go do meetings, and that's fine. But um, just we we get to enjoy y'all while we have y'all's parents like with us growing up, um, and just you know kind of. Even just working with y'all, like doing the things that y'all do, coming up here, the coffee shop, church, just, you know, going to eat with people, you know, it's just, uh, it's just fun. I love it. And it, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I think one thing that we've tried to do, especially maybe in the last four or five years, is because we, we did have a problem with the, like, like we did church and family all at the same place. And so I think sometimes it was trying to figure out what was what, you know. And um, Dr. Medios gave us a lot of really good godly counsel on that. But it's not like we have our house and then we have our church life. I think one thing that's been really beautiful is it's it's all woven together. So there's not like, I love that we're not a Sunday morning church. And so we see y'all maybe one hour a week and then we pretend we're family while we're here. But then like, really, we're going to go live our life over here. Like my boys have, I mean, everybody in this room has picked up my kids and taken them out to eat and just come and hung out. And I, I just think there's real relationship, real community and real family. And so because of that, I love that church and family are not separated. I'm not the like family comes first. You know, like, we're not the mafia, right? It's Jesus comes first. And then, yes, we are, like, blood-related family, yes. But but we are all family. We are the body of Christ. Yeah, and one of the most beautiful things is I have seen our children not only embrace it, but enjoy it. Like, they don't embrace it and just deal with it. Like, some of their favorite people are sitting in this room right now. And I just love that. They They love the people that God has connected us with. They have more fun probably than we do. Like they're always playing. They're always joking, always talking, always like every, Shiloh walks in is like Wayne and everybody loves it. And I just, it truly feels like. <laughs> Don't start that. <laughs> it always, it just really feels like family. And I'm, so thankful that they're being, you know, the, the Bible says that Samuel was raised in the house of the Lord. And, you know, how do you, I think sometimes we think they have to be raised like in the church. If they're not in the church every second of every day, they're not raised in the house of the Lord, but they are being raised in the house of the Lord. And it's been beautiful because we could be at church. We could be at a restaurant. We could be at the ball field. We could be at home. And to me, there's not a difference in any of them. I just love watching them being raised in that environment of they see when something's off, but they see when something's right. They see the the good, bad, and the ugly of people, but they also see the beauty and redemption of what God does. And I just am so thankful they've been able to be a part of literally all of it. Two or three things, so I can kind of keep track. Um, I'd, I'd like to talk about, I think that they would resent possibly or would be tempted to resent ministry and you know the, the hard thing about that is when kids resent ministry that's typically equated with God in their their mind so that's very dangerous I think that it would not be as beautiful as it is now because it was not always beautiful at home right and so tying into what Shiloh said on Mother's Day that we are always available. I think for a while you were not emotionally available, right? To me, nor was I to you. And so we weren't, as one, emotionally available to our children. And that, I mean, because, you know, we can sit here now and talk about how wonderful it is. And we trusted the Lord, but it was not this wonderful. In fact, when our pastor told us to um, 
take at least one to two nights for our family and do not mix that with anyone. Um, <laughs> we were all like, okay. It was like, it literally for probably a year was the most dreaded night, maybe in, maybe a year. And we had some things to work through. And so when, when I talk about many people want to be giant killers um, like David and, and face the, the giants that are coming against the church, um, we had to face the, the, the lion and the bear coming after our family. And had that not happened, I do not think there would be this stability, you know. So can y'all even think of how terrible it would be to come to a church service where we preach the love and goodness of God and the home life is terrible? Can you imagine what it would be like? Because you guys would know more than anybody if we were hypocrites. Can you even imagine how hard that would be? You know what I mean? (laughs) I mean, because you probably can't even, like, fully appreciate it because you've not known anything else, you know. My mom says it all the time. She said, your boys will never know anything but wonderful parents. She's like, I'm so thankful. But but then we talk about it's kind of hard to be thankful, truly, when you've not known anything else. But I'm glad you have nothing to compare with people that love. But, but we're talking, and there's a lot of people who don't have that. We're going to be have moms listening who aren't married, children listening whose homes are anything but peaceful, you know. So I want to I want to talk to that too. I want to talk into yes. I want to encourage anyone, especially couples right now, build your family on the Word of God. And one thing that the Lord told me years ago was meditate on My Word, what I want. In family, and you'll be the family I want. Meditating on the word and that becoming part of us, you know. How, how would you encourage young families who might be where we were, or even worse, like really rocky, arguing, like you know? Yeah. I mean, one of the main things was we did trust the Lord, and that didn't always display in how things turned out. Um. I think one thing that I really learned through all of this, especially when things were hard, is how much you loved being with your kids. Our kids. I'm the father. Um, <laughs> it didn't matter how, how, how tough things were. You, you, your favorite thing was to be with them. And I really admired that because I, I think I still equate like when I was in trouble, I don't think anybody wanted to be with me. You know what I mean? And I was kind of put aside or put uh, put in trouble or alone or whatever it was. And I think I just really admired watching you always want to be with them. And like you still kind of do that thing when they're off running and playing, kind of whiny. Come, kind s- of. come be with me. <laughs> tell, them, tell, them, tell everybody what she does when you're doing anything. She just looked at me like earlier and like, like fake cried almost. Just I don't know, just random. Here. What do you think that I'm conveying by that? What do I think? More like, what do I know? Okay, what do you, you know? You love me. <laughs> But I think it was such a it's such a beautiful thing that these kids won't know what it's like to probably not be loved. And and I would say it wasn't always that way for all of us. We all struggled, but but Cheyenne always had that thing in her to where her favorite thing was to be with her children. And I've always enjoyed my kids. I, I, I will say I've always enjoyed them. But when things were hard, my tendency I think was to almost like go away until it was better. And Cheyenne just never, ever left. And I think I've learned so much from that because now as a family, maybe especially over the last four or five years, all of our favorite thing is the same thing. And and I think for families that that's not true because that was not true for us all the time, 
the beauty of it is, is that it can be. And it doesn't matter how bad things are or where they're even headed. If you actually do trust God, and we've always believed, the one thing we did do is we believed that the Lord was already doing it. And because we believed that, we weren't overly concerned that they were going to end up messed up for the rest of their lives. Never. Matter of fact, we knew that they weren't. Never. Does that make sense? And so, I mean, Elijah specifically went through a really hard season of his life, but we never, and you've talked about it publicly, one of the things that helped keep you steady was that we didn't, we didn't take it very seriously, the hardness of it all, because what we knew, there was a bug flying like right around my face. I'm just like swinging. Do you want to hit me back? <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed by how much I learn about you with each sit down. Thank you. Can you see me? He, he's, okay, so I explained to them in mini putt putt. By the way, I made three hole in ones. Um, I explained to them how interesting it is to do anything, but especially mini putt putt, with contacts that have two prescriptions in them. Um, so there's the, anyway, so now Kevin will be like, it's me, Kevin. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, will just be random places. You'll go, Hey, it's Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why he just said, can you see me? <laughs> Sometimes I think if I just don't move, she won't see me. <laughs> I literally cannot. Yeah. I cannot. Hey, we need to talk. It just explains to me why you go away sometimes. Me. So now that I know it, I'm going to pull you back. Oh, good luck. <laughs> if you can see me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, I have an emerge so counseling weird. meeting. This is wonderful. <laughs> Mm. No, seriously. Part of that was the Lord's instruction. Well, it was the Lord's instruction. I remember him saying, um, never leave your children's hearts unresolved. And to the best of my knowledge and the best of my ability, I haven't. So I've never sent them off. If there was a problem, uh, we've never said go to your room and think about it. <laughs> it's like the worst thing. No, let's sit here and talk about it. And what we bring it to is the word. How would y'all, can y'all talk about conflict resolution? Kind of because we are not here to brag on our family. We're thankful for our family. But our hope, the reason we're doing this podcast is because um, Colin and Carly were talking about how encouraging it was to see a family, you know, knit together not depressed, loving time together. Can y'all talk a little bit about what it's like at home and how we deal with conflict and, and, and what we do with y'all? And I mean, I know it's only your life. It's your only, the only life you have. So it's, it's just life. But are there some things that you could um, say are big parts of our family? Like conflict between him and me? Anything. <clears throat> anything. I don't know. He's... I don't know, we just move over, I guess. Hard to, hard to think of the last time we had mm -mm. conflict. <laughs> yeah, we don't have a lot, so. And if that we is do, a miracle. It, if we do, it just, I don't know, it just gets resolved. Can y'all remember one night, late, late, late at night, and there was a conflict, and I was saying, remember the cross? <laughs> do you remember that? I feel like I was at church. So. We were just having a fight. And you're like, remember the cross. <laughs> remember the cross. It's like a midnight. You know, I just want I'm to I'm going asleep. to bed. Yeah. I'm like, remember the cross. Because I was like, I think it was, uh, somebody was saying like, th they don't know what they've done, but they don't get it yet, what they did. And I said, remember the cross. Remember what, what Christ actually said as he was dying. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I said, you don't have to wait until somebody gets how much they hurt you to forgive them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So really, we try to handle 
everything. I try to be at home who I am here. Sometimes I have fallen for the lie that I can't. Um, just not wanting to be seen as too much. And I would say there was a time in my life that I felt m more comfortable here than at home. You know, because I, I like to be too much according to most people's standards, you know. Um, but then I remember realizing that that was a trick of the enemy. And then I remember Elijah just saying some things, Shiloh saying some things, and it was like I could feel the Lord use it. The Lord uses them to minister to me constantly. Like it is since they were, since they could talk, the Lord has used them through dreams, through, I remember one night I was in my car out here, I was facing just a lot of attack. Um, I could feel strong spiritual attack. And Elijah came, as he often does, and joined me in the car. He, he loved to come sit with me. We loved sitting together before services. And uh, I just told him that I was considering going home. And I said, I'm just not sure what's going on with me, but maybe I just need to rest. And I just remember him looking. Can you remember what you said that night? I remember you saying, Mom, for you, I feel that would be dangerous. That is not something you've ever done, and I just don't think it would be wisdom <laughs> to start now, basically. Oh, <laughs> right? Right? And, uh, and I remember him recently giving me even more permission, like, Mom, you don't have to ask us. You just tell us what you... Because how many times have I need to be remem reminded that I'm the mom and I can set the tone? <laughs> like, it's rare for me to take over, huh? Yeah. And sometimes I'll be like, what do you want? And they're like, you're the mom. You can tell us what to do. <laughs> Y'all ask your daddy. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. Sometimes I'll be, I'll be like, don't even call mom. <laughs> Go uh, ahead. Just because she's just going to say, ask your daddy. <laughs> Yeah, um, but I think that I've I've started more a little bit yeah. lately. More, thank you, Lord. Trying to. <laughs> Do y'all have any questions? I think it's always fun. I love how Kevin was saying earlier, like that your boys know enough about like world events, everything to like dysfunctional families, um, but not so much that they are like um, because. Oh, thank you, Lord. Because when I was a kid, Elijah, how old are you? 16. 16. Okay, at 16, I knew way too much about way too much adult life. You know? Because you were exposed but not protected. Because I was exposed but not protected in the exposure. That's what I'm trying to say is, yes, you guys have covered them and enough to where they remain um, childlike, you know? And they don't have to grow up quickly. Yes. Um, I'm saying like in a healthy way, you know what I mean? Like a biblically healthy way. But also I was just saying that like these boys have seen all of us in this room get delivered of demons and get healed of childhood stuff. And I think that the way that God has like taught y'all to parent through that. And like, I'm sure there's been moments where like we as adults acted like we were 13 <laughs> Two 13 year olds. You know what I mean? <laughs> But the way that God has, like, ministered through y'all to us, I think all of us can agree here that we've all been ministered to, not only from Kevin, Cheyenne, but also through Shiloh and Elijah. I don't know how to, what I'm asking, really, other than you have thoughts. Go. go well, I, I feel like for just kids in general, um, I feel like, because I felt it, but I haven't gone with it, and that in stages of your life, things that you did, you don't, like, it's embarrassing to do. You need to grow up. You need to move on. You need to move on to what your age group does. But um, I feel like it's just better to stay simple in that, like, I'll sit down, like, I, with, with Addy or even him. I'll go build Legos. Or I'll play with Hot Wheels. I don't care, you know? And I just feel like kids have pressure. Um trying to you know trying to stay with the standard of their age <clears throat> but there isn't there shouldn't be a standard you know just do do what you love doing and don't feel ashamed of it 
the big thing for kids is don't be embarrassed and don't feel ashamed. Be, you know, be confident in who you are and who God has made you to be and just trust him. And, you know, it's just, yeah, don't be embarrassed and don't let other people pressure you into what they think you should be. I think kids and adults can receive that because, like, that's been translated from since a lot of us were kids and now is paints a picture of how we live our lives as adults, too. Because the moment that a boss says something or puts something, then we just immediately receive this pressure. And we don't even know why we receive it. But it's just like we come under it. And it's probably because we grew up our whole life feeling pressure and talked about all our potential, which we felt like we fell short of. So now we just mold into something. So it's it just gives it permission to, it doesn't matter if I'm six years old or if I'm 26, gives us permission to say, wow, like, don't have to freely receive that, you know? Because it's like the customs of this world is just to receive it and mold into something that people think you should look like. Right. Or gift it in. I love, one, one of my, I love, the, I love that you're talking about this, Elijah. Because one thing that, um, I can't say this definitively, but one of the first things we did as a family, almost unapologetically, was for my life. Like, we didn't set them up to watch TV, and then we went ahead and hid and did For My Life to try to get delivered. We all did it together. That's true. And it is not the most exciting thing in the world. That's even underwhelming. But the beauty of it is that these kids would just sit there and listen with us. And I think what's amazing is, is I think about me getting delivered personally. They were a part of that. They were a part of... They were a part of... They were. All of the the lessons and the sessions that we sat through, and we didn't we didn't go do that so we could get free. And if they could just leave us alone, we could do it. We just did it together, and it might be one of the first things we did together that wasn't like swimming or vacation or something. That's true, and you've been very open about. We've all been very open about our own, whether it was strongholds or evil spirits or whatever. Our, the places in our heart that needed healing. We still are. Like if there's something, especially if it causes um, a bump in the day, I will come and tell the boys what I was dealing with. It's not a lot, is it? Like it's not frequent at all, but if for some reason I'm just short, if I'm short with them, um, I'm going to come back and explain what I was dealing with, um, because I just don't think that is something that should be excused. I think that our children should not... I don't think that strangers should get the best of us. And your children the leftovers. Never, or you. I don't think that people who've never met me before or I may never see again should, should see more gracious me than you do. Than our children do, you know. My mom was really big on that. My whole life, she felt like you should be um, as kind at home as you are right. in a grocery store or to strangers, and I and I believe that too. In fact, I remember one night there was a conflict in the house, and um, I told the boys, I said, "Well." Maybe we're not going to church tonight because I've had a rule the whole time we've had this church. Once we all got delivered, um, uh, I, I said, if if we cannot go from exactly how we are at home and in the car into church, we're not going to church. So we will never pull it together in the car, put a smile on our face and get in here. <laughs> we come in like we are or we don't come in, which means we need to make sure well, I believe that the reason is that every day we're living in the fear of the Lord, knowing that God is watching us. He's with us. He's helping us, but he's also going to judge us, right? That's right. So we, we live the same way at home. And I want to give a point of clarification. When, when I say that we expose our kids to a lot of things, we don't do that wildly. Right. Um, like unprotective. And and we also didn't do it so that they could tell other people what the right answer is. 
We didn't, matter of fact, what other people thought was irrelevant to us. We wanted them to know what the Bible says, and, and we wanted them to know for themselves what the Bible says. And so both of my boys can attest. We'll get in the car sometimes, and we'll be on our way home from church, and it's a short four or five-minute drive home. And often we're talking about either something that happened at church, something that's immoral that's taking place in our world, and, and we're talking about the why. And I, I think you guys can attest to this. We talk about a lot of stuff on the way home from church and sometimes to church and when we were going to to football and all that stuff because there's so much chaos in the world there's an incredible opportunity to talk to them about what the bible says and i don't and and they can they can they can talk for themselves but we don't just sit around and give them scripture after scripture it's beautiful because they have they have real opinions they have their own thoughts on stuff they have their own questions and i think one of my favorite things to do with them is to talk through stuff. Because if Elijah and I are talking, you better believe Shiloh's got something to say about it if he wants. He's got an opinion about it. If Shiloh and I are talking about something, Elijah's got an opinion about it. And it's been so fun to hear their thought processes and how they've changed. Elijah's 16, and to hear what he would say when he was 13, but now say, man, I remember when I thought this was this, but now I can see what the Bible means when it says, it's just one of my favorite things to watch them develop and mature and to know that the word that has been put in them, even though, even though you may not see the fruit in that moment to watch it start to mature and blossom and grow has been my favorite because they are very inquisitive. Kids are way more inquisitive. I feel like nowadays than they were when, when, when I was younger and I just probably wasn't. So everybody probably was. One thing that you helped me with is when when they were a little bit younger and didn't agree for whatever reason, you would just tell me not to be intimidated by it. You're like, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know. And so mamas, don't be intimidated by your children's strong opinions. They don't know. They need you to guide them, you know. Elise, what were you going to ask? Well, it actually just goes really sweetly with what was just talked in the last few minutes. But I was just thinking I've seen these two boys really grow in to just like who they are like they're just them they're not trying to be who they are they just who they are and I love that they have their own relationship with the Lord and they love the Lord genuinely and so just like as parents like I think I've seen so many families try really hard to make their kids be something or who they expect them to be, who they want them to be, who they, you know, the, if I had the perfect child, they would be like this. And, and I've, I've just seen y'all like really let them grow into who God has made them to be. And just like, I don't know if y'all can talk more about that. Just like what, like as a family, like how is that allowed to happen in your home? That is really wonderful. Well, I think for me personally, like I'm just thinking, they're scheduled to play mu musical instruments. How would you say that? They're in, <laughs> they're in the band, and I, I mean, it's just interesting with what you're saying. There's no pressure on them. They're just in the band. They're here. They play with with their dad at home, and and so there's there's not like the nerves of like got to be the best one or you know. I feel like for me personally, my answer to that is after the Lord encountered me, He started really teaching me to burn my pictures because um, I started realizing a lot of my the pressure in my life was either expectation I put on myself or expectation others put on me. And I started learning that you can be expectant without having an expectation. Because if you're expectant, you're ready, you're excited, you're, you're ready to receive that, whatever God's bringing. But if you have an expectation, you can be very disappointed if you expected it to look another way. So I never wanted to put the pressure on them of who I expected them to be, you know, as far as like certain personality, certain whatever, except for 
the fear of the Lord, <laughs> the fear of the Lord, loving his word. And we're all ministers of the gospel. And I would say in conjunction with that, that you and I didn't, I don't ever feel like we ever tried to vicariously live our life through our children. Like, I don't feel like I, I, I didn't achieve what I thought I should achieve so that I'm going to make them achieve. I never felt that even in football or shine in music or so I don't know that we ever put pressure on them to be something amazing. Matter of fact, I feel like we have tried to take the pressure off. I mean, I know specifically in sports, I've told my kids for years and years and years, if you're not having fun, don't play. Matter of fact, if you're not having fun, you're not going to play. So in a way we've kind of done the opposite. And so I don't, I don't think we're amazing because of that. I just think a lot of the expectations that come from raising children are because we're so discontent with ourselves. And and because we're discontent with ourself, we try to make sure our children won't be discontent by making them discontent, you know? And so I loved my life. I've loved I've loved every season of my life, even the terrible seasons. I loved being a dad, even though it was confusing and hard. And I loved being a husband, even though that was the most confusing and hard. And like I've loved every season of our life. And so because I, I think and and Shine's never put pressure on them to be successful. I think, you know what's amazing about that? You never put pressure on them before the Lord even talked to you about success. You know, he'll give you to a three, right? Basically. I'm, this is why I don't tell dreams, because I don't have any of the details. But never seek success. I just really thought it might have been something else at this point. Pride. Pride. Same thing, whatever. It's same thing. But I just think because even before that, Shine never put any pressure on them to be like like mighty men of God or wow. incredible prophets or singers or worship leaders or pastors or musicians. Like there's been no pressure, but there's been direction. And I think that's something only the Holy Spirit can do. There's always been direction, but there's never been the expectation, the weight of the expectation. And I think that's kind of a hard thing to describe, but you, you've done, you did that even before you were encountered with the Lord. There was so much direction with the children, kind of preemptively striking on homeschool and TV and video games and different things that, that was you had tons of direction on, but there was never the weight of success on their shoulders that I can ever think of. You're, you're right, actually. When I was think when I was talking about, I was thinking, wait, that didn't happen after the encounter. I remember, like the the closest I came was making sure oh, I had a Euro mullet and like a little English looking coat and scarf, and I really wanted, I really wanted to dress my baby a certain way. I'll do that by the way for you. Oh, but part of that was because my mom wanted that too and so when I saw he really didn't I didn't want to make him miserable trying to make him my picture of what my baby was going to be because I didn't just have my baby I had Elijah Elijah is more than my baby once he came out of my (laughs) belly he is Elijah and so I wanted to see who God says he is. And so for me, when you when you say, okay, kids, I want y'all to be this, and you're going to be amazing. Like, you're going to do this, and you're going to be amazing. Well, then what are they in the meantime? Right. When people pressure their kids to do this, so you'll be successful. So are you a failure until then? And a failure if not then. So for me, they have always been amazing because they're mine. So I didn't need them to ever be anything but my babies to be. And I adore them. I love them so much. But I also, but I love God more. And and I love them through him. And so my love for them is not pushing them to be something. My love for them is is coming from his love for me and his love for them. And I'm I'm very aware that he loves them much more than me. 
And they actually belong to him. So who am I to put a picture of what I think they should be? Because instead of that inspiring them, I think it could depress them. You know, I just don't care what they want to do as long as they know God. It doesn't matter to me. And they know him. And they know him. Thank I thought, you, Lord. I thought the juice box would be a, a good thing for after what I was talking about. <laughs> Honest kids. <laughs> Honest. This podcast is brought to you by Honest Kids. <laughs> Organic super fruit punch. No added sugar. Hey, no added sugar. Honest kids. Y'all are honest kids. Super fruit punch. <laughs> Y'all are honest kids. I don't know. I know what it was I was thinking of. Um, and you can share or not you can share in any way you want to. But it was interesting to me the other day when you talked about how good it feels to have our trust. Elijah was saying the other day that if he had some incredible opportunity, something that he would think is incredible, but it would in any way break our trust in him. In other words, if he had the chance to do something before he got our permission or our approval, whatever. And I just thought about that. Wow. We do not suspect our children. We're not like trying to catch them in something wrong. We're not checking up on them like they're dishonest. We're not suspicious of them. We trust the Lord. Um, He is their creator. He is their savior. He will be their judge. And I just, I didn't realize it meant that much to you, like to have our trust. He knows we don't put our trust in him like, you know, like he's afraid to disappoint us in, in every second. But I just thought that was really interesting. I think I love I love this because we've talked about this a lot. Both all of us have. But I remember a few years ago, Elijah wanted to look something up, and he said, "Do I always have to ask you to look something up?" He said, "I'm not going to look at anything." I said, "Oh no, no, no! I'm not worried about you looking at something. I'm, I'm worried about something coming to get you." And I think it was a really kind of a clarifying moment because I think in a way, Elijah maybe thought that I didn't trust him. And it was so beautiful because I trust him so much. And I trust Shiloh so much, but we know that the world's coming to kill yeah. kill them. And honestly, we had that conversation maybe one or two times, and I don't think we've ever had it again. And so it doesn't mean they're not going to have more responsibilities. They get older, they will. But... I've been telling Elijah because he's 16 years old. I said, soon you're going to be 18. And the the beautiful thing about this part in your life is that we are here to guide and protect you to the best of our ability. But there will come a time to where some of this discipline is going to have to reside in you because you're going to have more things in front of you. And I just, I love how he responds to that kind of thing. Shiloh, you're about five years away. And I think I think one of the things we're doing now is not hoping that they survive right now. They are fine right now. I think one of the things that's been really fun for us is knowing that once 18 hits, I've got the utmost confidence in you because I have the utmost confidence in the Lord. And I know that you love the Lord. And um, I don't know. I just, I'm just excited about it because it's, we've literally got to watch fruit in both of our boys. And and because Elijah's a part of and Elijah and Shiloh are best friends, Shiloh's been a part of so much at a younger age, but he has been able to he takes it and he digests it. And it's been so beautiful because so much of the stuff they do, they they do together. And so, um, I don't know, it's just been being their parent parents have been some of the for sure the most honor of our life, you know. Absolutely. Apart from loving the Lord. I would say to parents on that Many times children will become who you expect them to become. So be sure in your protecting them that you're not suspecting them. Because that will put on them something like, oh, that's who you think I am? It's like I learned a long time ago that one way I could guard our marriage is by not distrusting you. Because if you dis, if I distrust you, I'm sending that out. 
I don't know how to say that, but it's like, I remember Henry Wright saying, one open door for affairs and marriage is the husband or the wife's jealousy. So the last thing I want to be doing is like worried and fearing that they're like, you could not give me enough money to fear for my children. Most days. I learned that years ago. I, I studied all day how the Lord protects our children, and he does that through faith, not fear. So I think that's really important. If you're wanting to raise godly children, then trust God to take care of them. You do your part. You put the word in them. You provide safe boundaries, but don't suspect them while you're trying to protect them. Because that's just putting a really unhealthy feeling on them. Does that make sense? Yes. So I probably wouldn't feel good, huh? If you were just always checking on you to see if you've done something wrong. Um, just you guys, like, being yourselves and who God created you to be. Like, you are touching my life or other people's lives and adults' lives without even knowing it. And I think playing Legos and catching frogs and, like, going to the trampoline parks, like, just some of the sweetest times <laughs> in my life, you know, and like allowed a lot of healing that clearly you guys weren't like trying to do or even know, you know, when you're six and 10 or whatever, but just the freedom of that. So thank you, Jesus. Um, I would say though, you all talk a lot frequently about your favorite place being at home, <laughs> you know, whether it's like coming back from vacation or you know, just nowhere being like home with each other and your dogs. Like, why? Why would you say home is your favorite place to be? Because I work with a lot of kids y'all's age, too, and adults, that the, they're the farthest thing. Like, that's they're trying to be anywhere but home. And I would personally say probably from, like, 14 on, that was me, too. So how do you, like, <laughs> why do you love home being together probably because it's mainly because it's really peaceful um it's like it's as peaceful as church at our house mm. well with us having f f parents that are grounded in the word and that are grounded in faith you know it it really helps so with a lot of kids, if the, if it's chaos at their house, that's going to be really hard. It would be hard for me. You don't encourage the children. I know, I'm so sorry. Encouragement or why you love it. Keep there. going. Keep fighting. I'm keeping my eyes.